Okay, as we are simplifying things that have uh, rationals, or radicals rather, in them, you know, we could, as we look at this problem here, you know, we could look at this straight away and say, okay, well, I have a binomial on bottom, so I need to multiply by the conjugate to get rid of that. You know, you absolutely could do that. And you would end up getting the same answer, but you're going to have to do more simplifying later. You know, you should always, always look at your options whenever you're trying to work through these problems. You know, no two problems are ever done the exact same way. There are always things that you can look at and go, hmm, I think this rule will apply. As long as you're using the valid math rules that you've learned up to this point, then you might be able to look at things in a slightly different way and still get the correct answer. For instance, whenever we look at this problem, we could, like I said before, multiply by the conjugate and, and work through it that way. Or, if you notice right away that the square root of 8 is not fully simplified, then you could say, well, let's simplify that first, just to make things hopefully a little bit better. Well, if we simplify this, um, 8 would have to be rewritten into 4 times 2, and we could take the square root of each one of those, so that would be 2, square, uh, square root of 4 is 2, so I could really and truly rewrite this problem as the square root of 2 minus 3 over 2 square roots of 2 minus the square root of 2. And now at this point again, you could look at this and you could multiply by the conjugate, go through and do some simplification. You absolutely could. Or you might look at this and say, hmm, square root of 2 and square root of 2, that makes these like terms here on the bottom. That's really and truly, oops, the square root of 2 minus 3 all over 2 of those minus 1 of those is 1 of those. Now we no longer have to multiply by the conjugate because we only have a single radical in the denominator. We just need to simply rationalize. So in order to get rid of this square root of 2 on the bottom, we would have to multiply by the square root of 2, top and bottom. Remember, we can do that because that's a 1. So now, let me come down here. So now we would have to multiply the square root of 2 throughout the numerator. So the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4, which is 2. Minus square root of 2 times 3 would be 3 square roots of 2. All over. Here on the bottom again, square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4, which is 2. This is our fully simplified answer. So it just depends on how you see it. Okay, lastly, we have this problem, and boy, does it look like it might be monstrous. But you know, you always have to go back to trying to figure out what do you know. We are adding this to a fraction, which means our fraction rules are predominant here. What do we need in order to be able to add fractions every time? That would be a common denominator. So between 1 and the square root of 3, our common denominator would be the square root of 3. Now keep in mind, we're just using fraction rules here. Our second fraction already had the common denominator, so we don't have to change that to an equivalent fraction. Our first one, though, in order to make this a square root of 3 on bottom, we had to multiply by square root of 3. So we have to do the same thing to the top, just like we always have with fractions. So the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which is 3. Now that we have a common denominator, we can add the numerators. So this would be 4 over the square root of 3. Now we don't leave our answer this way, we need to rationalize our denominator. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3, which will give us 4 times the square root of 3 on top, and on bottom, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which is 3. 